How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to be taking a look at our first NAT variation, where in this video we're going to be specifically focusing on traffic that is coming from a, a VPN enabled device and sitting behind a NAT enabled device. So consider this to be like a spoke that you deploy behind a NAT enabled device and it needs to be able to reach out and still be able to communicate with other endpoints and things like that. So we've already enabled CSR2 for NAT. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up a VPN endpoint on CSR7 to appear with CSR4. And the idea is that CSR7 needs to be able to send traffic to CSR4 to communicate with CSR8. So this does work. It's been, I did test it. It's got a little bit of a kludgy configuration and I'm going to walk you through how I had to troubleshoot to figure out how to get this to work uh, because originally it was just like, why is this not working? And once I dug into it a little bit deeper and I realized what the problem was, I'll walk you through that step as well. So the first thing that we need to do is look at the config. I've already got it. Uh, I've already got the VPN configuration set up. So if we do a show run section crypto, I don't want to waste any time. So I went ahead and I just went ahead and configured the crypto configuration already. And if we do a show IP access list, we're going to see that there is a an access list configured here to match on source and destination traffic. So that's already uh, done. It's already working. I've already tested it out. It does work. The next step is to validate the config on CSR2. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the show run access list. Show run, or sorry, show IP access list. And we have, I've actually gone through and removed the crypto entry for crypto map entry 20, which was your first one we did to connect to CSR4, because we no longer want CSR2 trying to also encrypt the data. Because if we had that in play, we would actually, it would attempt to go out and actually form appearing for the traffic from CSR7 to CSR8, CSR2 would try to do that. And we don't want it to do that. We want it to just transparently pass the data through. So I just removed that particular entry in the crypto map sequence processing. And if we look at the, the IP access list is still configured. So that traffic from 10.1 to, to 172.24, that's still in place, but it's not gonna be taking, taking advantage of because there's no crypto map entry to say, hey, here's how we're gonna do this. So the way that this is actually gonna be configured and tested is we need to do a debug on the crypto isocamp process. So this means that when we try to send the traffic out, we're also going to be taking a look at how it's configured on CSR7 side and also how that's affecting or being affected by the configuration on the NAT enable device. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send a ping to 172.24.0.8 sourcing from loopback zero. Very a pretty standard ping. So I'm going to send the ping out and you can see it's trying, right? Well, we're dying. At the very end here, we're dying. Right there, our ping is timed out. So, if we look at this configuration, it doesn't give us a whole lot of information. So we're trying to ping out and stuff like that. Not as much as being, um, not much is noticeable, right? Well, this really doesn't help us, but now it does. So now we get an error. We do an undebug all. The error states the local is 172.16.1.7. The remote is 41.0.0.4. There's our first key clue. Because now we're like, okay, that's the source. So that's what crypto is seeing being sent out and back. Now, if we look at CSR2, do you notice a 172.16 entry here for NAT? You don't, do you? That means that if we were to attempt to go out and send the NAT traffic through this device, it would never get NATed. So if we look at the show IP NAT translations, we have nothing. Well, no, let's go send it one more time. This time will just be a quick ping out. It's being sent, but we have no entries. So in other words, the NAT entries are never being matched on by the access list. So to fix this, I'm going to go and type in IP access list extended and then VPN underscore NAT. And then I'm going to type in 20 permit IP of 172.16.1.0 slash 
slash 24 to any destination, right? We don't care where it's going. I'm going to jump out of global config and I'm going to go back to CSR 7 and I'm going to try to do that ping one more time. And but before I do that, I'm going to go in here and do a debug on the crypto. Okay. Did a couple times and now see how it says autumn almost right away that I've uh, that Ike V1 or Ike phase one completed. And if we look at the show crypto ISASA, we're a QM idle automatically. If we look at CSR, we didn't have to send any traffic. If we look up here, we do a show IP net translations. We can see an entry. Actually, let me do an undebug all here. We can see that there's a message here that's doing 500 and 4500. This is the communication actually passing through as being natted, which is what we wanted to do. And the reason why it's being natted is because we're allowing it to pass through. And it says sees it as UDP messages going outbound. That's what we expect to see. If we look over at, CR, at CSR4, go undebug that real quick. Undebug all. And that's going to take a minute or so because there's probably a lot of control plane. Actually, I'm going to skip that for the moment. We can see that it's working because we can see the traffic going back and forth. Now, if we go back to CSR7 and we hit the undebug all command. And we come down here. We can see QM idle. It's working. Now let's try to send that ping again. It works out of the gate. And that's what we'd expect to see. If we go back to CSR2 and hit the up arrow, we're not really going to see any additional entries because it's being passed inside of ESP and everybody's happy. So that's one of those things where I was like, this is weird. So the first thing, just to recap what I had to do, I had to get rid of the crypto isocamp, or I'm sorry, the entry in the crypto map on CSR2 that was encrypting traffic from CSR7 going to CSR8. I had to turn that off so that CSR2 wasn't trying to encrypt the traffic that CSR7 was trying to encrypt. Almost trying to do a double encryption. We didn't need that. I'm not even sure if that's possible. My gut thought was, well, no, it can't be. Um, I haven't tried to, to get it to figure out. Not something I really care about. What I was attempting to do was demonstrate setting up a peering from CSR7, or I'm sorry, setting up a crypto configuration and a connection through a NAT-enabled device. I wanted to make sure that we could do that. So that's pretty much how that would come into play. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this video. I'm keeping the, these specific ones pretty short because it's going to be specific. And I'll be coming up with some other NAT options in upcoming videos, so keep an eye out for those. And until next time, guys, take it easy.